What's your general opinion of the Bible? Well, I suppose my general position on the Bible could be broken into two primary feelings. One feeling is about my personal feelings about the Bible um, in terms of how it's affected my life personally. And the second group of feelings could be um, the feelings that I have about how the Bible has affected many people's lives other than myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel that they're very different opinions are, are based on those two subjects. So let's cover the first. The first is that I feel quite strongly about the Bible. I have quite a, lot, a strong love for the Bible because of the personal things that brought me, particularly in my first century life, the books of the Bible that are now contained within the Bible now, um, I had access to at different times of my life, particularly during my childhood and sometimes I would visit synagogues regularly throughout my life and I spent a lot of time studying what is now called the Old Testament of the Bible. This is the reason why I could quote pieces of the Old Testament to the, of the Bible to the Pharisees of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, my feelings were was that uh, without the Bible, or without what I, you know, was the Bible in the first century to me, which was the which was the Torah and the holy books and the Psalms and the Proverbs, without those records uh, being available and being copied by copyists. I would not probably have discovered what I did discover about God in terms of God's love and God's truth. I could see in those books, there was a, once, once I removed all of the unlovingness, I suppose you could call it, uh, in all of what I read, I could see that there were times when these particular people who wrote these verses were totally inspired by God, I feel, at times, you know, they were just, they, other times they were inspired by very dark and addictive and quite some evil emotions at times as well. But there were times when they were really inspired by God. And during those times, I, when I read those particular passages, I always felt a very strong connection with God. And I knew in that moment that these, this was a truth about God in that moment. So every time I read, for example, about God being a punishing God, you know, being the God of the Israelites who would leave them into the promised land and destroy the wicked people around about, I always felt disconnection from that. So, so I never really believed any of that as God's motivation for the Israelite nation. But when I read about how God feels about the individual, how God had this longing to have a connection, you know, to have the heart of people t change from a heart of a stone into a heart of a flesh, and all of these other things, I felt a deep passion for God under those circumstances. And I realized, yeah, this is really getting down to the meat of what God was all about. Mm -hmm. And so I started to see through this interaction that God was showing, uh, there were times of inspiration that these people who, who had written had. And during those times, there was a lot of truth and a lot of love that would come through the material. And then also I started noticing that, that this time of truth and love was so, um, ha had such a huge effect on me that, that it started me through a process of investigating, experimenting with receiving love from God and, and, and knowing how to receive truth from God. So for that reason, I have a very, very strong love for those particular books of the Bible. And there are some prophetic books that really appealed to me. And there were some of the Psalms and the Proverbs that really appealed to me. And, and these particular books I really focused on. They, they were books that I realized were given through the process of prophecy, which is a process where a spirit overcloaks or, or controls a person on earth to write certain things. Mm -hmm. And under those circumstances, the spirits were in quite good condition and they were telling the people on earth things that really were quite inspirational. When I read the law, which was written by man mostly, and definitely written by uh, men who were just governors and spirits sometimes who were, wanted to govern the Israelite nation, I always felt a very, very strong disconnection from God. And therefore I knew that these weren't God's laws, but rather these were man's laws. Mm -hmm. And so I could sell, tell the difference between parts of the so-called word of God that were, that were really the word of God in the sense that they were what God felt about certain things and parts of the word of God that weren't the word of God at all, but rather just the creations of mankind in order to control and, and, and legalize a system of control for humankind, mm -hmm. the Israelite nation in my case. 
So that's how I saw the Bible at that time. But I have a deep love for it. Now, in comparison to that, how do I feel about how the Bible affects people now? Well, that, that's very different because I see that most people, when they analyse the Bible, they either do it from one of two different directions. One is they criticise everything in it. Mm -hmm. Or two, they accept everything in it as God's word. There's no middle analysis or very rare to, have, to see in a person this middle road type of analysis that, that I had in the first century and I've had all my life. Mm -hmm. And, and so what I notice people doing is they polarise when it comes to examination of the Bible. Mm -hmm. The people who criticise the Bible and who do not accept anything in it are not accepting quite a lot of things in it that are about love and ethics and truth. And these particular people, I feel, are quite disadvantaged at times because of their dismissal of everything. It's like the old saying, throwing out the baby with the bathwater. The bathwater's bad, so you throw out the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And this is what I feel a lot of people do with the Bible when it comes to dismissing it completely. And in fact, many people who come along to our seminars have dismissed the Bible completely. And when I start quoting different Bible texts, they get very challenged. Mm -hmm. Many of them uh, have a deep amount of rage associated with the Bible because they have rage associated with religious control. And so as a result of that, when you start quoting the Bible, they get all you know, stressed out that you're creating some kind of new religion or something, when it's just ideas and concepts that mm -hmm. you're trying to present. The second group of people are a group of people who believe the Bible is wholly God's word, is completely God's word without modification, that God's protected this Bible throughout the centuries of, of its creation. And these people believe, or say they believe, absolutely everything in it. Of course, bearing in mind the fact that there are at least 33,000 denominations of Christianity on the planet at the present time, this would indicate that everyone interprets it differently. Yes which is an issue in itself. Mm -hmm. And obviously interpretations are very open to emotional constructs. So, so what that means is if I emotionally can't accept a certain interpretation, then I dismiss that interpretation to f and search for another. Mm -hmm. And many people do that with the Bible, but they still think that it's wholly God's word. They still believe that it's, you know, everything in it is true. And I can't agree with that. And I have also seen quite a lot of damage caused by that. There are many people who have been severely damaged by that attitude that, that they've reflected in the Bible. There has been huge justifications historically for slavery, for the murder of other religious denominations and other religious people who practice different religions uh, throughout the centuries based upon different quotations from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And this is an indication that the fruitage of what complete belief in something does is it causes huge amounts of problems if what you're completely believing in is not based on love and truth. Mm -hmm. And the Bible is not completely based on love and truth. It just is not. There are many lies contained within it, even about my own life. There are definitely much, there's a lot of lies and blasphemy about God, about God's nature and God's attributes and qualities in it. There are a lot of truths too. The key is when you read it, you need to be able to determine the truth from the lies. Mm -hmm. And I feel it's well worth reading to work through this emotion inside of yourself of how to determine the truth from lies. Mm -hmm. it's, gr it's a great book for doing that. You know, you can work it through the truth and you can work through, oh, well, this bit here can't be true because I can feel that this is, you know, based on some kind of unloving behaviour or unloving idea or unloving concept. And so you, you can dismiss those particular ideas as, as lies. They're not, they're not true. They're not true about God in many cases, or, or other, other events. And, you know, I have the advantage, of course, of having a personal life associated with the Bible in the sense that part of my personal life is recorded in the Bible. Yeah. And I know that much of that was not recorded accurately. So I know that it wasn't the truth and therefore it cannot be God's word. It was just the word of, of men. And in fact, I knew a lot of the men who wrote bits and pieces of it. Mm. <laughs> And, uh, and in fact, in, in time, in my, after my passing, I met every person who wrote every book mm -hmm. of the Bible and had discussions with every single one of them about what was true and what wasn't true and you know, what part were embellishments and what parts were complete fabrications and what parts were actually true. And so I've got, had this advantage of having discussions with every one of those people, as do any person, any person who passes in the spirit world has the advantage of asking these people to come to them and say, is this true? Is that true? Is this true? Is that true? 
Uh, many don't, of course, because they want to hold on to their concept that the Bible is God's word. Mm -hmm. But if they do that, they learn many things. Mm -hmm. Many things were true and some things, uh, many things are, are not true. And they learn that through this process. And so I feel that though that there is a huge amount of damage that is caused by this indoctrination in the Bible. The indoctrination into any form of religion and any form of text is in itself flawed because no text ever presented in this planet can ever contain the full truth. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is flawed as a concept to, to believe that one text contains the full truth about any subject. And, and this is because God is infinite and God's truths are infinite and we're going to be constantly discovering more truth. This is what drives the interest in most of our life. The truth will be scientific as well as informational, as well as sometimes what people might classify as religious or it will affect our way of life. It will be about our personal development. There'll be lots of truths. And these particular truths will, will grow over time because we, we're growing. We, we learn more about love, we more and more about truth. So we change and we understand something more as a result. And if you use the Bible as a tool to do that, then it's a very valuable tool. If you use the Bible saying, no, it's the definite word of God, there is no other word of God and all those kind of things, then straight away you've now become indoctrinated by, by it and you now are formulating a fixed pos position, which is a very unwise thing to do with your life. And once you form a fixed position, you now will not demonstrate any, any humility to learn any new truth. Now you've become an arrogant person basically with a fixed view of truth. And, and this is very, very damaging to your future life, very damaging to your relationship with God, very damaging to your relationship with your partner, mm -hmm. very damaging to your relationship with friends, very damaging to your relationship with peaceful and harmonious relationship with people in the world. Every time you force a position and then criticise and condemn other people for not having the same position, you are now going down the track of a very dangerous road which creates a lot of disharmony. That doesn't mean that you can state the truth that you know, right? You can state the truth you know, and the truth that is being proven to you can be stated. So, for instance, most people in the Western world know that if they flick the light switch, the, the electric, electrical power, which they've learnt a little bit about at least, they know, know that it's dangerous under certain <laughs> conditions, but they also know that it's very helpful under other conditions and it turns on a light bulb and they can see at night if they wanted to. So, you know, there's a truth there they can accept that particular truth. Now, 200 years ago, nobody believed that. Mm -hmm. Not a single person believed that, you know? And three or 400 years ago, wasn't even conceived for most people that it was possible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, truth is obviously something that, that develops over time and the same applies to truth about God. In fact, the truth about God that applies to the most because God is infinite. God is more infinite than anything God has created. So therefore, God is going to be far more difficult to know right now and then say, I know God completely when, when time will show other truths about God all the time. It's always going to be a process of development. So logically, it makes no sense even to believe that the Bible is God's word mm. and that the Bible is wholly the only word of God. And any person who does that, I feel in the future will find themselves quite disappointed because, because in the future they'll realise what has actually happened to the Bible and when I say their future, it might be after they've passed into the spirit world. There's also been a lot of spirit influence in the creation of the Bible. People's ideas being transmitted from the spirit world onto earth. And so these particular, you know, things that are contained in the Bible are definitely not God's word, but rather the word of spirits in the spirit world who have transmitted this word to others who were so-called inspired of God. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what a person who's Christian might call them, but I would call them inspired. <laughs> not of God, just inspired in the sense that they had the ability to communicate with spirits and transmit information from them. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so just to summarise, if I can ask you some very direct questions. Sure. Do you believe the Bible is an accurate representation of God's word? Definitely not. Uh, do you believe there's any benefit in the Bible? Yes, I do. Uh, do you... Uh, have, have you benefited personally from the Bible? Immensely. Mm. Immensely. Yeah. Particularly in the first century, I would never have discovered God's love without it. And how can a person use discernment then when they read the Bible? 
in the manner that I've previously described in this answer, and that is to look at love and truth as the, as the measuring sticks, and any time something that's mentioned that's out of harmony with love or that feels out of harmony with love to the person, to dismiss it until such a time that it's proven some, some other way. And what about people who say that they turn to the Bible to learn love and truth? Well, uh, well, you can't learn love and truth from everything in the Bible. There are many unloving behaviours recommended in the Bible. And this applies to the treatment of women, to the treatment of people with different um, races, the treatment of people who disagree with you, going to war, and other things that are all contained within the Bible are obviously evidence of unloving behaviour. So, so you can't just across the board assume that the Bible portrays loving behaviour. Mm. There are many things in the Bible that do portray correct loving behaviour, but you are going to need to have some discernment in order and wisdom in order to determine what they are. So how does one develop this discernment and wisdom? By receiving God's love. Um, when we receive God's love, we start to discern everything through the love that we've received. And then we start having discernment and wisdom. We now start now seeing that, ah, oh, that can't be true. And this can, must be true just through measuring it by the love that we've received. So one of the things that I do recommend people to do with the Bible is to have a look at how the Bible says to receive God's love. Because the Bible does talk about being born again. It does talk about becoming at one with God. I, there are many quotations of my own where I illustrate how to become at one with God through illustrations and metaphors. And all of these things can be looked at in order to develop this personal relationship with God. And this is why it's a very powerful book. It's one of the, in fact, it is the only book that talks about at one with God and being born again. It's the only holy book on the planet that does that. Mm. And for that reason, it's quite unique. Mm -hmm. And that's why also I have a deep amount of respect and love for it. But I do not assume that it contains all of God's word. And that's the main difference that I have between myself and many Christians who then throw a whole heap of Bible verses at me which are obviously out of harmony with love and therefore are out of harmony with truth. Mm. And we can, we'll talk about some of them today in the different questions that you're asking today. Great. Mm. Great. Thank you. Mm. Thanks, mate. <laughs>